over 5,000 connections in my network. So mm -hmm. I have a lot of people looking at what I'm doing. And then in my group, I already have, have 3,000 um, connections in there. And it's just creating a, creating some value for them and also bringing them into trainings that I do. Um, you know, I'll have a Zoom call. Like I'll, I'll target my group. And I'll say, hey, I'm doing a Zoom call on, you know, uh, optimizing your profile. Mm -hmm. Send an email. We'll send them. We, we target message each individual person. We're not, we don't use a bot. Right, you right, a, right. You know, someone on my team, a human being. Because if you start doing that on LinkedIn with a bot, and they say, "Are you a human being?" and the bots are going to go, "Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shut, shut your account off." Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So uh, we we have humans do that, which is fine, you know, and that's human interaction. And then we create a, a an interaction, a dialogue with them, and then what the client does is they take that interaction and they give it to their salespeople, and then they take it from there. So it's a great way to, uh, you know, just get get in front of people, actual people who can buy your product and who so wanna, are really interested in your product. What is your actual product that you're selling on LinkedIn then? Is it accounting services or is it more of the, the LinkedIn uh, development stuff? It's more of the, the whole, it's kind of a, like a holistic package. You call it LinkedIn Lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a group for you. We optimize your profile. We include, in, include your presence on LinkedIn. We'll work with you on content, what to post. You know, you got to be methodic, methodical with posting. You should post every day. And there's yeah. different things you should post. You could post engaging things, entertaining things, um, you know, and then you throw in stuff about you, like about what your product is. Right, right. And, and then if you go through that cycle, people get to know you a lot better. And then, you know, hey, maybe they don't want to buy from you now, but at least they know you kind of like those billboards on the highway you know with the lawyer the injury lawyer <laughs> i'm not injured why is this billboard here i'm like all right well i remember that guy's name if i do get injured i'm going to go to him so, be injured eventually yeah so we just try to bring people into the world into our world hey, Brad, uh, brian welcome to the show buddy yeah i think we're up in live they said they can't all hear right. you but uh i don't know i think i can hear you i got a message from facebook saying they can't hear you but can't know. hear me can't hear you i don't know I don't know. Whatever, we'll figure it out eventually. Sounds like there's an error between the keyboard and the monitor there, totally buddy. Totally is, yeah. <laughs> All right, do you have questions for Michael? Um, so, uh, yeah, this uh, I've kind of neglected uh, LinkedIn my whole life. I've been Facebook and Instagram, and uh, every now and then I'll, I'll repost into LinkedIn just as a as a dump or whatever I put on Facebook just to try and stay active. Um, what I did realize though is the couple of things that I did put on LinkedIn, I've had people out in the business world reach out to me and say, Hey, I saw this, I saw that. And as much as it didn't get any likes or anything like that, it did get seen, which was kind of interesting. Um, it does get seen and, you know, right. people will reach out to you and you can make a connection with people to show them that you are a business person and you're serious. This is the product that you offer and you can help them. I get a crossover because, uh, my network on LinkedIn is uh, HVAC related contractors and stuff like that. And then the real estate side too. So when I post something about real estate, I've had people on the HVAC side and the general contracting side ask me about real estate and uh, it kind of bridges a gap between the two things that I do, which is, which is interesting because uh, I've actually sold a house to the mom of one of the project managers of one of the companies we deal with because uh, he found that I was in real estate. His mom was looking for a house and uh, I found her a house. So it, the networks crossed. All right. Well, I have to see if the people watching can hear me now. I just changed a couple of audio settings because I can hear everybody and we're getting in the zoom, but I'm streaming on OBS and I just changed something in the OBS sentence to see if that fixed it. So if you can hear what I'm saying now, um, which is strange because normally if the zoom can hear it, the Facebook can hear it. But uh, anyway, now we make fun of Brian for his technical difficulties and here we are with Sam yeah. with his. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. All right, you carry me for a second, Brian. I'm going to uh, just make sure these audio settings are right. All right, so um, so Mike, what do you think is uh, what everyone should goal should be with the uh, with LinkedIn? Like, what what kind of posts uh, should we be putting? It's more business related, or, or do we get the the kind of uh, generic uh, lifestyle posts that we do on Facebook and Instagram? Yeah, I, I got to ask too, because you know I put the same stuff up that I put up on Facebook and Instagram, and I've got about a thousand followers on LinkedIn, and I get very very little engagement Same with way, it. Yeah. Whereas you know Facebook, I can make a post and get two hundred comments. I can make the same post on LinkedIn and and not even get a thumbs up. You know, is is there something we're missing here? 
Yeah, I mean, you, you, it's two different um, animals, I guess. Facebook is more personal, and you can kind of post stuff of your you know, dogs and stuff like that, and cats. Um, uh, LinkedIn is LinkedIn is becoming more and more kind of motivational as well, and like you know, and motivating people. So you can post memes and things that in that nature. But a lot of people see it, even if they don't give you a thumbs up, people see it. Right? A lot of people come up to me, especially at Apex gatherings, and like, hey, dude, I saw you on there, and well, they just come. I don't even know who this person is. Like, hey, Mike, how's it going? I'm like, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> but they know me, right? It's they know yeah, me. On social media. Like, it's not fun. It's not fun. It's terrifying. You just, it's a- you just gotta be. Uh, hey, how's it going? I know this guy. Hey, man. Good to see you. Yeah, it's terrifying. We don't realize how many people we touch because we all attribute it to the likes and stuff like that. I find, and a lot of people see it and don't like it. You know, but they've yeah. seen it mm-hmm. and they, they acknowledge it in their head. And then when they see it in person, they talk about it. Like, hey, I've never seen you like or post on one of my posts before, but they're watching. Uh, they are watching. Yeah, they are watching. So. Um, yeah, LinkedIn is, is also, from what I'm seeing lately, they're not really censoring a lot of stuff. I mean, like a lot of stuff is going through. Okay. Whereas these other platforms, I know we're on Facebook, maybe I shouldn't talk about it, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. But it, you know, I think they just let it, they let a lot of other stuff go, and it's kind of more of an open platform, and I think it's going to benefit them in the long run, to tell you the truth. So I'm worried about the other platforms censoring. Um, there are a lot of them, and you can't deny it. They do do it, uh, and I think it's going to come back and bite them in the in the butt. No um, doubt. Yeah, I, I think so. The world's begging for a uh, a, a more open gotta, social media. You got to think if something happens, where are people going to go? Probably all back to MySpace. I mean, I still got my password. I mean, I think we can get get back on over there, Carl. <laughs> So, so yeah, well, dial up. Good dial up modem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get off the phone. I got to go on the computer. <laughs> the days we talked about the last. Yeah. Time. The stuff we've seen in our generation is pretty wild. So what's right. the the first step you do with your clients, mate? You you run them back through and you go and do a full profile analysis. Um, what are a couple of tips you can give to the people watching that will help them, like? spruce up tidy up and uh, optimize their uh, their linkedin profiles so they can start getting better results um i have a i don't know if you want me to, i have a powerpoint i don't know if you want me to go for it can i share it sure go for it Screen share. i did actually people like that i did uh, my own i don't know can i share I can... yeah just hit the share button share screen i'll show you a couple of slides um of what i did i guess that's the best Disable participant screen sharing. Did you enable it or? Uh, That's on you, Brian. Screen share. Anyway, I guess that's the best way to just kind of show. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I didn't realize you had a PowerPoint. Um, I uh, I can share my screen, but how do I? If you hover on share screen, I think there's an arrow, drop down arrow. Advanced sharing options, maybe? Oh, all participants. There you go. All participants. Got it. Uh, Nothing like a live podcast. There you go. (laughs) All right, try that. You can get into the podcast. There There we go. All right, see? So we're going to be tech savvy by the time this thing's all over. No, you won't, mate. No, you're right. (laughs) It's kind of what I did last week. How to optimize your profile, grow leads organically. Um, That's me. I have uh, Aurelius Resources as my uh, company. We grow organic leads. We help uh, businesses optimize. In my LinkedIn profile, I have 5,000 plus connections, right? Um, just talking about, about profiles. We also have the best lead generation strategies. We have over 2,800 members, close to 3,000. Actually, that, that number has grown. Um, you know, talking about profile, picture, and background. You know, you want a professional picture. A lot of people put like, you know, in sweats or something like that. You don't want that on LinkedIn. You want a professional profile picture. People are going to go to your profile. They want to see that you're the authority. They want to see that they can trust you. You know, description about me, LinkedIn generation strategies, um, CEO and RK to get Apex, you know, kind of, you know, connection with people. Also background logo. A lot of people don't put logos or they just put a picture, a random picture. They can go on Canva, make a nice, you know, logo for themselves. It's free, you know, get a good picture and you can put some wording in. 
Um, also, featured section, there's other sections in there. You want to try to do a, an article, you know, like if you have an article that you publish someplace else or a blog, create an article on LinkedIn, copy, paste, make an article, and then link it here. This is a feature section. I got uh, featured in Zapier. Um, they talked about nine examples of effective conversational marketing. They talked about my methodology. This is another um, article that I wrote. You can write blogs, activity, like you want to make sure you're on LinkedIn. A lot of people say, oh, I haven't been active in the last 90 days. You don't want that to happen. You want to have a lot of activity, you know, like over 5,000 followers, posts, likes. You want to make sure, you know, I'm doing the New York City Marathon. You want to mix it up, right? Talk about yourself. Uh, the about section, you want to put in maybe some bullet points. You want some criteria. I create social media strategies. Also feedback, you want to put feedback in how people have, you know, like your product, right? They, people, people like to see validation. Feedback is good. And then links to how, how they can reach you, you know, email, website. Also experience, like how, what's your experience? Say you do this, all right, well, I have, you know, I have really resources, we do this for people. Uh, I'm also a CPA, kind of gives you credentials, what have you done? Um, also recommendations. I talked about it before. It's good to ask for recommendations and, and these are people that I've helped in the past and they give me good recommendations and people look for this. And you just have to ask people, you know, ask them for a recommendation if you help them. Um, and then, you know, growing leads organically, you know, create, we create groups for people. Uh, we post great content. These are the four categories, encouraging, engaging, entertainment and work. We do DM conversations and, you know, um, offer them some free training. We do webinars. I host a webinar for somebody under my uh, the LinkedIn uh, Lightning um, strategy. We'll host the webinar for you. You come on, you put a PowerPoint together, and, you know, you, uh, you're the expert, right? And then we, take, we do a Q&A after that. So we just kind of promote you on LinkedIn, get you going. Um, and just put you in the best light. And we talk about a funnel before, you know, also get them into your world, awareness, consideration. Uh, they'll consider you, you convert them, you sell, and then you create loyalty, right? They'll keep buying from you, and then they'll go out and tell other people about you. So you just want to bring them into your world. Um, and that's kind of our strategy, our formula. Everybody's happy. And, you know, I'm also offering a free review of uh, your LinkedIn strategy. If you take a look at your profile, I'll give you some suggestions. Um, here's my contact information. I'll put it in the, uh, the chat as well. Uh, and people can, can contact me. That's it. Yeah, I love that. That was, that was a really good, uh, a really good overview there, man. And I'm just, I'm monitoring the comments for questions. I managed to get us up in the uh, in the Apex group as well and sharing there. So maybe we'll grab a couple of, um, <clears throat> grab a couple of questions from there. But what would you say the most important part of that optimization process was? Most important part of the optimization of, of the profile? Yeah. Is there any one particular thing or do we, do we really need to go through and, and, and do all of it? I, I would um, like I would say, do all the sections. You don't know what people are going to look at. Maybe they're going to say, who's this guy or who's recommend, you know, has he done any work? You see recommendations. Maybe they go to the about section. They want to really read about you and what you do. You give bullet points, bang, bang, bang. This is what I do. Um, these are the recommendations. This is how you contact me. A lot of people have these profiles. You don't even know how to contact them. They just have that LinkedIn profile. They might not yeah. be the LinkedIn. How are some, how are they going to know? If somebody's looking for what they're doing, you know, give them everything. Yeah, contact give me your website. Give me your email. Um, Man, I, I love it. I mean, you know, like how many times you go and you try and reach out to someone and there's no way to contact them. It makes me crazy all the time. Click yeah. on their profile and you're like, um, all right, there's no link here. Come on, guys. It's the simplest <laughs> thing you can do is some kind of contact. Yeah, give, them, give them everything, you know, let, let, make it easy for them. You know, yeah. sometimes yeah. people like to text you. Man, I don't know. Some people give them their number. I don't know. Um, yeah, so um, it, I think the whole thing uh, is what you should do, especially the pictures. A lot of people leave the pictures blank. You know, 
put something in there, you know? Yeah, how do you grow no love and trust without a picture? You know, it's, uh, That's true. You don't know who you are. I would think it's like some bot, you know? Like, like this totally is not a human right. person, you know? So now you got their interest, and now they, they don't even know if you're a human. That's true. Totally <laughs> so is there is there any kind of um, time demographics on LinkedIn like there are on Facebook? I know on Facebook there's specific times of day where there's more traffic uh, depending on what target audience you're shooting at. Uh, would the same thing apply to LinkedIn? Do you find the executives there, they're busy in the morning or that they're on there in the evenings? Or It's kind of right. I mean, I like to post my stuff first thing in the morning and just let it, let, let it stay out there. It's kind of like Facebook. It cycles through, you know, like mm -hmm. it'll show up. So... There's really no, as far as I, I know, there's no optimal time on posting stuff. It's just, just get it out there. But the thing is to be methodical. Like if you're going to do it daily, do it daily, right? Don't skip no, it. I totally get that. Yeah. Consistency is where it all comes from, right? Consistency is key in anything. Are the algorithms similar to Facebook where the posts kind of die after a while and what, you know? As I noticed, like when we post Instagram, Facebook, you know, you get a run in it early and then they kind of die off. It but, depends, I guess, on the, the likes and, and the shares, the you know, else, obviously yeah. if, people, if more people like it, you'll see it. Keeps you know? running, yeah. Like usually if you see something, it'll have like 2,000 likes or something like that. Yeah, Everybody people carry it, then it keeps running, yeah. But if it doesn't get carried, then it uh, dies. Yeah. But I mean, you know, in, in terms of your profile, if, if no, you know, nobody, or you get two likes, I mean, a lot of people are going to see it, right? And it's there for the future. If somebody really, well, who is this guy? Like, okay, what is he talking about? Right? They'll go through your history and then they'll check out what you've done in the past and just give them value. You never know who's looking. You never know who's going to do it. Just You just got to be methodical and do it every day. So I got to ask, man, where are you getting your content from? Do you have some kind of curation service? Are there any tools you use and special tools for finding stuff out? Or is it more like the Facebook stuff where we're just going out and because um, on Facebook and Instagram, we're making interesting content just from the things that we're doing from day to day, from hour to hour. You know, it could be riding a bike like Brian. It could be sitting and drinking coffee with a client. Uh, are you putting that kind of stuff on LinkedIn or are you like more of a, a curator of articles and, and, and stuff? I'm really curious about the, the type of content that drives the engagement over on that platform. Yeah, well, providing that, you can also do polls on LinkedIn, which is good. You can ask a question. What do you think? Like, where are you getting your leads from? Mm -hmm. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, to see what see how people are, uh, uh, are, are reacting and where they're getting their leads from. Um, are you happy with your leads, yes or no? A lot of people said no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like, all right, I got, I got something for you. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. you know... Um, also, you know, memes, right? There's memes out there you can post. Are memes, memes good on LinkedIn? They work on LinkedIn? Because I send memes all the time uh, to, to dead clients and to clients that are kind of ignoring invoices and not returning, uh, you know, uh, sales calls and stuff. Does that does that work through LinkedIn then? You Sometimes get that same it works. Kind of you know, I mean, it depends on the but, – but, you know, people appreciate – they do like stuff, you know, and they see it. You know, if I post, like, motivational stuff, it's Monday – you know, anything that this week throws at you, you're going to, you're going to crush, right? Stuff like that. They like that stuff. If you can make people laugh. I think uh, no matter what platform you're on, it'll gauge them. You know, it's uh people like to giggle when you see a funny meme and kind of makes you click on it and want to know more about it. I think then uh, it grabs your attention, right? That's what we post on social media. We want stuff that grabs people's <laughs> attention, makes you click on it. Yeah. There was one uh, recent uh, meme. It was about a guy, you know, there were, there were soldiers in Vietnam and he was in the bunker with his friend and, and the friend passed away at his casket. And he said, you know, I'm going to stand guard, you know, one last time, whoever goes first, we're going to stand guard. And the guy passed away. They showed a picture of him in the casket and the other Marine was like standing right next to him in his uniform, standing guard. Like I, I found that from LinkedIn and I posted that to Facebook and it went nuts. Stuff like that. I mean, there's very emotional stuff on LinkedIn as well. It's not just like, okay, well, you know, let's do some spreadsheets. and. <laughs> <laughs> I think spread, spreadsheet memes and golf memes would go down well on LinkedIn. That's, <laughs> right. that's what I think in my head. I'm like, oh, it's about golf. That's you know? the stiffer yeah. of the platforms, yeah. <laughs> so, it, you know, I mean, there's like, there's 750 million people on LinkedIn. And no in no US, way. That's well, that's Worldwide. a crazy amount. And, and, the, and in the U.S., there's 175 million. 175 million in the U.S. 
Right. If you do a search on whatever your, you know, whatever topic you're doing, I, I talked to a guy in Nebraska. He was a retired veteran. He was selling Medicare insurance. I said, all right, well, I know who your target market is. It's, it's retired veterans because you can, you know, you can, uh, you know, assimilate with them and you can connect with them. And that, how many retired veterans are in Nebraska and the surrounding states? I'm like, well, let's check it out. So we did a search and uh, we found 20,000 retired veterans in his area. I mean, there you go. I mean, that's there that's a lot right there. Right? All on LinkedIn. Yeah. Say if you reach out to 20,000 of them and you get 2,000 that are interested, that's 2,000. Say if you get 10% of that that want to buy stuff, that's 200. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just another source for, uh, and then they have friends and they have veteran friends and then you get referrals. Uh, but it's just a way, another, uh, another avenue that a lot of people are like, yeah, I think I have an account. I'm like, dude, you got to get on there. Get like your account that. going. Let's jump on a call and help you out. I feel like the people on there are probably more serious, more real, more intentional uh, than, than your people playing on Facebook and Instagrams and stuff like that. You're right. I figure like, if you're going on LinkedIn, you're kind of going on there intentionally. You're not just creating a profile with a fake name, and I mean, no. you know, what I mean, like there's a lot of fake names on Facebook and a lot of just a lot of nonsense that goes on in those type of platforms. And I feel like if you're going on LinkedIn, you're not going on there to play around. You're going on there to be intentional. So the people you're mining for, the leads are probably a stronger lead than you would get from, say, Facebook or uh, or any of the other platforms. You know, it's more yeah, uh, adults I mean, in a room. We'll call it. <laughs> But I mean, what are you in business for? To, to watch cat videos, or are you in business to sell your service? You know, right? I mean, so I figure those that's what you gotta do. So where you want to do? You want? I mean, people have been very successful on Facebook and Instagram, and they've gotten a lot of clients. But I mean, if you want to increase your odds of, of targeting and talking to an actual person who has the means to purchase your product or service, then that's a good, that's a great place to go. That makes a lot of sense. But, you can really be focused. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I find real estate clients all over Facebook, but I find the majority of media clients on LinkedIn and we target specifically to people that are <clears throat> in a decision-making position at companies of a specific value with the specific number of employees. And it, it works, it works really, really well. Um, yeah. we're, we're doing it organically with, with organic content. And then we'll, we'll, I do have a live human reaching out by messenger, um, interacting with these guys and engaging with them. But real estate, I've not, I don't think I've sold a house off of LinkedIn and I sell the majority of my stuff off of Facebook. Yeah. And in media, it's flipped because it's, it's more of a B2B role. Um, mm -hmm. We're selling media services to businesses and we find everyone on LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn is just, it's a little goldmine for us. It is. Um, it's more of a business to business. Um, Facebook is probably a business to consumer. But I mean, we're talking, I was talking to Brian about agents, right? Yeah. There's, Let's there's, talk about real estate agents. There's brokers that, okay, maybe they can't sell a house on LinkedIn, but maybe they can recruit a bunch of new agents then. Mm -hmm. We always have to build our team. So that's, uh, and I think, yeah, with Brian's model, like the more agents that you bring in, the more revenue you can generate, yeah. right? Sam is also uh, part of our group. Yeah, so the more agents we can bring online, obviously, the more the more revenue we gain, and and the more people that we bring into our circle to coach too. Yeah, yeah, you bring into the coaching programs. I mean, it, it all one hand washes the other. It all runs around uh, all together. And you know, I'm now very interested in seeing what I could do about putting together a LinkedIn group, uh, the same as my Facebook group. My Facebook group's got 1,200 local business owners in it. I wonder if there's a, a market for that on LinkedIn as well. Do you find it's mainly big business people on there or can you tap into a network of entrepreneurs on LinkedIn as well? Well, there's a lot of entrepreneurs on, on LinkedIn. Actually, um, you know, we talk about RRT. Um, you know, I, I, I made connections with RRT, um, with individuals, investors and builders. And I had a LinkedIn connection who had some, some builders out in California, Florida, she was looking for investors so i connected one with the other and now boom they're going to do big things right they're going to do big things and if i wasn't on linkedin i would have never you know had her i would i would have never connected with her so she was on there looking to connect with people like me to connect people so and then both of us you know are making or 
it was a good transaction. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, like a, a business to business networking, right? I mean, so do you do you find a lot of blue collar businesses on LinkedIn as well? Because Benny, one of the the guys watching, is asking, how is it for service industries uh, like the contractors and stuff? Is it is there a lot of blue collar movement on LinkedIn, or is it more white? There's all you know. There's all kind. There's contractors on LinkedIn. I mean, you have to just think about what is your uh, target market. If you if you're not going to find the actual homeowner. Maybe you're going to find a real estate agent who who knows a bunch of homeowners, right? Mm-hmm. And if you kind of connect with them and say, "This is what I do," I go in and I I, I think he paints house. He does painting, right? Yes. Hey, yeah, Benny does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got my buddy Benny, and um, you know, uh, I can connect him with him. He does a great job. Yeah, and as as a realtor myself, I do know that we are constantly uh, searching for reliable contractors you know they're yeah, only reliable as, contractors i mean uh, it's just it's your reputation as well you don't want to mm-hmm. get someone they're only as reliable as their last job <laughs> that's that's what i found out um yeah so, so we there, get that question every day you know who do you got for painting who do you got for roofing who do you got for plumbing and you know sometimes i don't have someone because you know last person i recommended didn't call the people back and whatnot so we're always looking to build that network because we like to be connectors right we want to be in the middle of the show and that's how, how the business comes to us. And I've, I've always been that way. And uh, I think having the resources through our networks here is what makes us successful. I mean, even uh, unemployed people, they put unemployed in their title. Hmm. There's millions. There's like 2 million people. Wow. <laughs> that's it. I'm unemployed. Now, I know yeah. a friend of mine uh, out on Eastern Long Island, my friend Brian, he does like 200 houses a year. A residential house he kills it and you know, he swears by linkedin and i'm not sure exactly what he does he says he can target the areas around the house um you know wherever the house is listed he can target that area and, and i guess i don't know serve the meds or whoever he's doing it um again i'm not sure what his angle is on it but he swears by it because we were talking one day and he's like, oh yeah you're not using linkedin you got to use it yeah how deep how deep do the customization and targeting options go on linkedin ads Ads. I don't. I don't deal with the ads there. Um, you know, okay. I, I grow. I grow leads organically. I haven't really spent any money there. But there are options that you know you can you do ads uh, like Facebook and like Google ads. Um, so mm-hmm. there is. If you have a budget and you want to spend that. Um, oh yeah. no! I'd I'd rather make them organically. It's it's far cheaper and the the results last. Well, that's, so what it, that, that's what I find as well. So I mean, much you, just, you throw money at it, and people like I've heard guys like on Facebook spending forty thousand a month, forty thousand a month on ads. I'm like, what? I used to spend thirty five grand a week on Facebook ads because that was the most they would let me spend. Um, obviously, there was a hugely positive ROI from it, but they wouldn't let me spend anymore. Like you can, wow. the, the traffic's there. If you've got the budget, they got the traffic. Yeah, um, but you know you're not going to spend that much money without the ROI No, no, it's a tested yeah. scale campaign. Um, I, it, it's scary to come in and say, let's throw five grand at something and see if it works. Mm-hmm. Um, so for, for me, once you stop paying for ads, you stop getting any kind of momentum from that, from that money. Whereas, whereas I'm paying for organic as I'm building the organic, the, the momentum never stops. It just builds and builds and builds. So for me, organic marketing has had just far greater returns than any kind of forced paid off stuff. Do you, right. do you find the same way? That, that's what I find as well. I mean, you're, you grow organic leads. Uh, they know you now. Mm-hmm. If they need anything or somebody needs something that you offer or a service that you offer, they'll send them your way. So it's just a great way to just connect with people. And, you know, a lot of people that I've talked to um, that are very successful, even DMs on like Instagram, DMs on Facebook. This is the way we connect with people, right? Right. Hey, I saw your post on blah, blah, blah. Why don't we have a conversation? Or what, what are you doing? What do you need? You know, and then you just get on a call with them or get on a you get on a Zoom call and you, and you make it happen. You know, you just cut. if they're not ready to buy, that's fine. At least now you know each other. Um, invite them to your uh, next training session and you know then you'll get their email because you've invited them like through event right or something you yeah. can take that email put it into your crm that's what we do for people as well they don't know what a crm is i'm like all right okay <laughs> we need to <laughs> 
Yeah, we're gonna need to educate this. you on this and and get some uh, get, get you some emails on there and get kind of a you know campaign like a weekly email campaign or something that goes out. You know, to just keep in touch with people, give people value. You know, just constantly give, 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 give. You know, and then fine. they'll remember you. Just keep giving. I'm just right? I'm just making notes here. Yeah, just write it down, <laughs> man. Uh, we talk about that. Uh, you know, for ten leads that you give, you get one back. So you just got to keep giving. It's a it's a averages. So. Just keep giving out good stuff, and uh, for every 10 good things you give out, you get one back, and that's what you should expect. So that's how much you have to give. You have to give 10 times what you get. Um, and we also talk about uh, being intentional with those relationships. Like I said, making those connections, reaching out to those people that you think that you mesh with, and, and being intentional and saying, hey, you know, I like what you're saying. Let's talk. Let's meet. You know, let's connect. And that's that's how we met. And, uh, you know, it's uh, well, that's how all of us met. Hey, I like, I like what you're about. Let's talk. And, uh it turns into a relationship, and uh, and then we help each other along the journey. So, uh, super important, obviously, whether it's LinkedIn or anywhere. We talk about this to just be intentional with people and, and go out of your way to say hello to someone and find out what they're about. If it looks like someone that may mesh with you, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. So you got a uh, part two of your uh, your thing here, uh, crushing your fear podcast. Crushing your fear podcast, yes. Yeah, all. let's talk about your podcast a little yeah. bit. About that, like Batman, yeah. I do leads in the daytime, and I'm Batman in the evening, <laughs> crushing your fear. Uh, but th- you know, I've experienced a lot of fear in my life, and I don't think people are really talking about fear. And we see fear rampant in this this pandemic. You know, a lot of people are just scared, um, and it's just very unnerving for me. And you know, I've I've gone through a lot of fear, um, two divorces. Uh, you know just you know we can get into it but i don't want to get into it here (laughs) but it was just you know um i i and actually my fear kind of developed physically i got i was starting to get eczema stress induced eczema i'm like what is this right i went to a dermatologist like three times because i had a lot of things going on i owed a landlord i had i owed a bank i had a, a, a divorce and just everything was like a vice and that's how it came out how it manifested i'm like this is bad and then I talk to people, oh, yeah, that eczema, yeah, stress will do, that's, like, what are you talking about? I never heard this stuff. This is crazy. And the dermatologist, stress after do the bad time, to you. Yeah. she's like, do a biopsy, and there's, like, stress-induced eczema. I'm like, this is crazy. I got to do something about this. So I worked on myself, overcoming that fear. Um, I ended up writing a book. Actually, I have a manuscript that's not out yet, but I do have the manuscript. I've got to get it out hopefully this year or early next year. And I started the podcast, and I just have people on um, that talk about their fear. And there's a lot of people that have gone through just way, way, way more than I have, which you don't realize until you really sit down and talk to them about their history and, and their past. And I think it's great for people to just listen how they've overcome their fear and get to the point that they are now. So, um, I like it. I'm checking it out right now on um, Apple Podcasts. Um, it looks like you've had some really great guests on there, too. So, uh, and a confession, um, I know exactly what you're talking about with stress-induced eczema. Um, believe it or not, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing how many of us have similar stories of stuff that's happened same. to us. We're all on but the same yeah, journey. Man. Um, the more we I talk have, about this, the more we figure out we're on the same journey. I have had that, dude, and it's miserable. It's miserable. I it's don't wish it. And, and don't wish it on anyone. Just taking stuff, and then I was like on this steroid cream. So I'm like, what? I'm like, what's going on here? Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. You know, I ended up on a actually in an air mattress in a strip mall. That's where I was. That's my home. I'm like, this is not good, right? I mean, if you want to hit rock bottom, there you go. The only way you can go is up. So I, mean, I got yeah, out of that. You know, did some things. Got RTA, got Apex. Did 75 hard twice. Trying to just be, you know, give to people. And we avoid the fear. Yeah. Turn it around. I talk about yeah. it all the time, the acronym, right? False evidence appearing real, right? We're well, making decisions in life on false evidence, right? That's fear, right? Never... That's fear. We have these these things in our head that are worse than they really are, and we, we stress ourselves out with these things, and, uh, and that and... false evidence that we're making decisions on is affecting our lives in a really bad way, and it's false evidence. Like, you know, we really just got to get to the bottom of it and not let... You know, make our decisions on concrete stuff, not what we think and not what we perceive. Because ninety really percent of it is just a thought. It's all in your head. It's not real, and and it, and it's bad because it cre- creates chemicals. You know, when you're fight or flight. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh my god, 
creates chemicals, bang, you're out. But if you're constantly fearing, it's, it's creating these chemicals which just erode your body, age, just your blood vessels just rips it apart. It's just, it's terrible stuff, you know? And people get, people get sick, you know, if they don't deal with it. So can we talk about overcoming that then? How did you, how did you manage to get across that bridge? Uh, just looking at my life and taking responsibility for stuff, right? A lot of times you just, you just point to other people and say they did it. It's because of them and oh my God are becoming, you know, so right, there's either two choices. Like you, you just go in a corner and just say, Oh, my life is over. Or you say, well, wait a minute, hold on. This is in the past. You know, this is what I'm wrong. This is where I need to improve. And then I worked on it. I meditate, got my body in better shape. Right cut back on the alcohol. I had a brewery. I opened a brewery. Hmm. I was drinking like a gallon of beer. My beer was awesome and I had to drink it, but we don't know nothing about you know, that. It's not good. Yeah. Like we do it every day. It's not good. But cut back on that. Um, listen, read books, right? Get on 75 hard. If you're, if your people out there haven't done 75 hard, everybody has to do it. Oh, it's awesome. Right? Life changing. You know, like I don't care who you are, get on that damn thing. It'll change your life. Um, it it'll, it'll just put you on another level and things will be very clear. You get very clear on stuff. Mm. And that's how, you know, and then what, what can I do to kind of give back to people or address what's happening in the world today and what's happening with people, you know, historically when you see this and, and people are just one event that could happen to them. Even one sentence that an adult can say to a child can just change their life. Mm. Right. And they just never overcome it, which is a waste. Right. Or a lot of people have ideas and then their uncle uh, Sam says, that's a stupid idea. What are you thinking about? Why don't you just go? You got a job. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. They say, you're right. When that that idea, if they went forward, could have helped maybe millions of people. Right. This is what happens, you know, oh, and that's just touching upon There's areas like the medicine, the government fear what other people think. Right. Um television the media all kinds of fear all around us uh and it's just you have to learn how to deal with it and so i get people on the podcast which i you know if i talk to people i'm like i got to get you on the podcast mm -hmm. and they come on and we just have a great discussion about what they, how they've dealt with fear and that helps me actually as well maybe I, I can say it's like selfish but it does help me but now i have more information that i can help others with mm -hmm. i'd love to do my book i love to get my book out there I did do some speaking as well. That, that's one of my goals. Get out there and start doing some speaking. I think so how long till this? How long till this book drops? Let's let's commit to a deadline right now. When's it coming so, out? Uh, I say spring. Ability <laughs> partners right now. Spring. Mm -hmm. Spring. Hopefully before that. Hopefully before that. MDM. Watch for MDM. MDM. Is it I want to be on stage at MDM. I think we all have that goal <laughs> at some point. I think, yeah, I think we've all got that goal. Yeah, and not playing fluffy ball. Either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, those marshmallow things weren't the best. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, but no, I talk about this stuff a lot in my morning. Uh, my morning, we write at doing messages, and uh, uh, one of the things I like uh, to talk about it's it's something I got from Joel Osteen. It's don't let anyone steal your joy, right? We wake up and and where mindset's good, and something will happen in our, in our lives, and someone will say something, someone will do something, and if we let them steal our joy, and it's just like you know what, you're not stealing my joy today. Just get that in your head. I don't care. Let it roll off. Take a deep breath. You're out. I'm still. I'm staying happy. You're not. You're not stealing my peace today. Uh, that. That's one of the big uh, things that, that I really try yeah. and focus on in my life. That you're not making me go sideways. I used to get sideways over stuff. You know, someone cut me off. I want to run them off the road. Put them up in a ditch. You know, what does that do for you? It just makes you crazy. You know, and shutting off the news. Garbage in, garbage out. I don't watch the news anymore. I just. I, don't, I just don't. There's no, no. point. The news is, I, I don't watch the news anymore. I watch very minimal TV. Once in a while, I'll, I'll watch it maybe on a Saturday evening for a little bit or something just to get, catch up. But um, but people, when they criticize you, 99% of the time, it's something of, of themselves. Definitely. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Like if they see you going ahead or getting better, right? Mm -hmm. Crabs in a bucket. It's like the crabs in a bucket, right? Yeah. <laughs> So they got the issue. It's it's just them. Maybe it's showing them like a mirror on them what they haven't done with their life, right? And what you want to do. So they criticize you and try to pull you back. 
which yeah. is the force of average or trying to keep on talking about the building a confidence yeah, true, true, yeah. true. The getting out of the force of average and building our confidence i mean this whole apex journey that we're all on here is you know what just do it and just stand out of the crowd and mm -hmm. if you don't like it don't stand next to me you know that's the way i'm at now <laughs> you know and you know it's yeah, just, I mean, you have to limit your time with people like that i'm yeah, sorry you know, i get up every morning i say a message if you like it great i got a whole bunch of people that like it and i got other people that have comments about it you know what you don't like it don't watch it whatever you know <laughs> You know, like I don't, I'm not here for. That's, that's the attitude you have to have, you know, though. Just, like, because you're going to attract the people that are attracted to you, and you're going to repel the people that you didn't really want to do business with anyway. I find that in the last four months on this little journey of since I found Apex, we're kind of getting intentional and positive, and really just trying to to give and give and give. The people that I'm attracting into my life, like you, like Sam, that people just keep showing up that are just like minded. We're all on the same journey. We all had the same problems. We're all here to help each other. Um, the more you give and the more you radiate that that positive energy, the more it pulls back to you. You know, when you're when you're around someone that's that's complaining all the time and this sucks and this sucks and the boss sucks and his work sucks and his job sucks and everyone now the whole company's saying this sucks and it just poisons the whole company. But when you're around everyone saying life is good, this is great, we're really you know there's a lot to live for. You know, gratitude every morning, right? We say we got to get up and do our gratitude. You know, be thankful for everything. Don't don't say I wish I had this and I wish I had that. Be thankful for what you do have because if you're not thankful for what you have, how do you get any more, right? So, and it, gratitude, yeah. it, gratitude should be your attitude. That's, that's what I said. You know, we're never you thankful know, for what we have. We want more, and we're I not mean, even thankful for what we have. Like Apex yeah. has been tremendous. I mean, I haven't found a group like Apex because I've been, I've been trying to find something like that, and now I got them. And I talk to them about my ideas. And if I talk to anybody else about it. Well, my ideas are like you're crazy, you're nuts. We call ourselves the aliens. <laughs> I talk to these guys, they're like, let's fucking go. <laughs> let's go. Like, we we go aliens. <laughs> like yeah. we were we were kicking around an idea um on Saturday, and by Saturday Saturday evening, uh one of the execs that I was involved with had a, already had a team together to run it and <laughs> A freaking uh, a Zoom call schedule for the next week to get everybody on the same page and oh, like okay. they just like they go like I love Dang. it I love Let's being go. around that kind of attitude yeah it's awesome it's awesome makes stuff um, happen all right so um, we have just a few more minutes left for you Michael was there anything specific you wanted to cover before we got off of here and any messages you want to put out to the guys that will be catching us on the replay i guess well for linkedin i mean check it out if you got a profile um that you haven't looked at revisit it if you want to contact me contact me michael at um you know aurelius resources um i guess i got some if i put stuff in the chat will it go to everybody i'm not sure uh no but you can get it to us and we can upload it It'll yeah, just we'll go to, i'll get you the yeah. details you know aureliusresources.com or just contact me on linkedin i'm michael Torty. i'm on linkedin or on facebook you know, send me a DM and let's look at your profile. I don't care. We'll just jump on. We'll do a Zoom call. I'll tell you what's wrong with it. You know, you can fix it. If you want to take it to the next level, we'll give you a great uh, deal on a, a program that I've been talking about. You have multiple packages, um, right? You said you have like a base level package all the way up to full service packages. Yeah, you'll run base people's level. LinkedIn. You know, you'll, you'll basically yeah. post for them. You'll run their groups. You'll do all that stuff if, if they need that. And then all the way up to the lead gen and uh, I know right. he, we touched upon some of the packages that he does. It's pretty, pretty interesting. You know, sometimes, you know, we're, we're all too busy a lot of times to post on the social media. I find myself that I have content. I take pictures all day long across my journey and I don't get to post them all because I just, I just can't sit down for 20 minutes and dedicate mm -hmm. to a post, you know? So uh, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have someone that sometimes can put those posts out there for you. We post them and then we keep them focused. Yeah. We keep you focused yeah. and coaching on your journey, you know? So, and also about fear, crushing your fear podcast. Check it out. You know, we do it. Um, I try to do it twice a week. Usually, one is with a guest, and then the other part is just me talking about. I don't know when I'm tired. I'm thinking. <laughs> or I see something, you know, or I see something in the media, and I'm like, this is just crazy. You know, I just kind of laid it out there. <laughs> we we have a we have a similar format. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love so, it. Yeah. And and but just you know, understand that the fear that you're feeling is mainly just a thought, and it's not real. And you just got to stand up to it and say, I, I'm just not, I'm not doing that. All right. I have power. You have energy. You know, there is a, there is a God, there's a universe gives you energy. And if, if you uh, dwell on the negative, you think negative things are going to happen. Guess what? Negative things are going to happen. If you dwell on the positive and, and surround yourself with positive people, you're going to be a star. I've heard it explained Amen. that we wake up every morning and we have a choice to make it a positive day or a choice to make it a negative day. There's really 
no difference. It's all just a thought, right? A good yeah. thought or a bad thought. It's the same energy, negative energy, positive energy. We just pick which side of the fence to walk on that day when we get out of bed. So if you wake up, <laughs> that's the truth. You know, right? so if you wake up and cranky and tired, you're gonna have a cranky, tired day. But if you wake up and the sun's shining, and you ride at dawn. You get up early, you ride your bike, you go see the sunrise, and you know, uh, go meditate a little bit. And you know what? That day starts incredible, rather than you know, rolling out of bed and hungover and all the other stuff that uh, you know, day yeah. starts bad. But it's really just there's no there's no finite good, there's no finite bad. It's all just an idea. So you just got to pick the idea that you want in your head every morning. Yeah. I love it. All right. And on that note, we're going to wrap this up. I want to throw a huge thanks out to you, uh, Michael. And guys, we will get the show uh, notes. We'll get his social links in there. I really want you to go check out his LinkedIn group and uh, his LinkedIn training. Um, I, for one, will be scheduling something because my LinkedIn is good, but it could be great. I think uh, I think that Michael might be the key to that. So huge thanks, Michael Potorti. I hope I got that last name right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, anything to add, Brian? Because uh, I'm, I'm about ready to get out of here and see these guys next week. Well, this is uh, uh, Apex Northeast representing right now. So for the uh, <laughs> Southerner and, and the bottom of the screen. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, we're, all, we're all brothers together. And no matter where we call from in this country, we just, you know, we're all aliens that reunited through Apex. And uh, it's just fun to be on this journey of life with you guys. And I appreciate all of you. Appreciate well, appreciate you getting real. And, and listen, the more real we get with each other, the more we realize that it's just real life and, not not, yeah. right, not to be ashamed of it's it's just part of the journey that gets us stronger so certainly okay. is thank you for coming out michael thank you for watching guys thank you brian and uh we will yes. see you all same time next week all right you'll awesome. stay tuned have a great thank night you. guys god bless all right we are we should be out i cut the stream off whether it stops on facebook or not i don't know we'll see um there's a little bit